This camera is slow if you are the kind of person who likes to snap photos while walking along the street. This camera will really test your patience. To get good images, you actually need to stop, take the photo, and give the camera some time to process the image. It's not the smoothest experience for a photographer. People always say it's not about the gear, it's the hands behind the gear. But let's be honest, learning photography as a beginner with a $1,000 camera is way easier than learning with the slow Canon G12 from 2010. That said, there is a silver lining. If you choose to embrace the limitations of a less capable camera, you learn photography the hard way. You'll push yourself to your limits, which can ultimately make you a better photographer. Let me share a little personal story here. My first two laptops were painfully slow. The first one was stolen and my parents replaced it with another slow laptop. I was still so grateful, my family wasn't wealthy, so having a computer of my own was a big deal at that time. Because my laptop was loaded with bloatware and barely functional, I learned to work around its limitations. I tried different Linux distros to make it run faster, use open source software and basically became a problem solver. When I finally earned enough money to buy my own proper computer, I felt extremely grateful. If I hadn't struggled with those slow laptops, I might not have learned so much or appreciated what I have today. The Canon G12 is my version of that experience in photography. It's the first camera I bought with my own money, and it's what started my channel. I love this camera. Many people would call it outdated or even crappy by today's standards, but I don't care. I've done all kinds of fun, weird experiments with it. While its images are not as clean or sharp as modern cameras, it has a character that I adore. Some may even say it looks film-like. I mean, feel free to disagree. I once compared the g 12 CCD sensor to the Canon G1X CMOS sensor. Sure, it wasn't a fair comparison, but it helped me appreciate the unique creamy look of the G12. Even when I maxed out the sharpness setting. The zoom lens on this camera is also incredibly handy. For instance, when I shoot with my Fuji X70, which has a fixed 28mm equivalent lens, I sometimes find it hard to be discreet because I need to get so close to my subject. With the G12 zoom lens, I have more flexibility. If you are still learning photography and didn't know what focal length you prefer, a prosumer camera like the G12 is a great choice. Now let's talk about the settings I use, which are inspired by a portrait film simulation I shared previously. If you haven't checked my video, you can, you can check them out on my channel. First, for the white balance, set it to sunny and shift it to amber 3 or A3 and magenta 4 or M4. This gives the images a slight magenta tint, which I prefer to make it look like portrait, I guess. For the image type, make sure to set it to JPEG only. This is crucial for adjusting the color settings. For the custom color settings, set the contrast to plus 2 for more punch and then sharpeners plus 1 or plus 2. The camera's creamy character handles this well. For the saturation plus 1 to enhance the colors 
in my compositions. I want to play around with compositions, especially color, so I want to make it pop. And you can leave the rest at zero. For the dynamic range, set it to auto when shooting in aperture or shutter speed priority mode. When shooting in manual mode, I keep it at 400. Regarding the exposure triangle, I usually shoot in shutter speed priority because this camera is slow. I aim for at least 1 one twenty fifth second to ensure snappy images. Sometimes I set both aperture and shutter speed manually. People say the sweet spot for this camera's aperture is between f4 and f4.5, but I don't overthink it. As for the ISO, I let the camera decide. Ideally, this setup works best on bright sunny days. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with a lot of rainy, cloudy weather lately. For night photography, I switch to auto mode and let the camera do its thing. Just make sure to stay completely still for the best results. I really like some of these shots. Even if a view are out of focus, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I think that's it. Remember, keep snapping and stick to your budget. Au revoir.